Captain Forest here, and in today's video I'm going to be going over both these combatants to see who'd win, more often not, in a crossverse situation, Raven versus Majik. Now, if you guys are new to Corrin's channel, please leave a like, comment down below, and possibly subscribe for further content. And of course, shouts to the Crusader gang, much appreciate to the team, huge shout to them, they also help me in my videos too. But yes, I'll be guest appearing again on Corrin O'Keefe's channel, hi everyone, and I'll be going over uh, Raven, and I'll also go over Majik. So, I'm gonna go ahead, start with Raven talk about what she has to bring to the table, talk about her feats and statements. I'll also go over her standard feats. So Raven states that if uncontrolled, her powers could destroy a universe. Raven's soul inhabits the space separating the earth and the 11 worlds of the afterlife. Raven has the power to turn the heavens to ashes. Inside Raven is another dimension, an empty void. We also go to see that Raven's good self was able to fuse with her demon self into one being. Another impressive feat for Raven was demonstrated when she encased an avatar of Darkseid in her soul self and feels Darkseid's wrath. Raven used her powers as an empath to manipulate Darkseid's soul, fusing it with Wonder Woman's mother soul. Let's talk about her speed, hexes and resistances and any other miscellaneous stuff. So Raven should easily have immeasurable to irrelevant speed. Raven was able to tag and blitz Hal Jordan, Hal Jordan himself has demonstrated impressive speed showings of his own, such as flying to the future without his lantern and can travel a timeless, distanceless barrier in an instant. Raven is able to react to Starfire and avoid her attacks, and Raven has tagged the Teen Titans with her powers. So that's going to round up speed. I'm going to go ahead and talk about her abilities. So Raven has some impressive showings with her magic powers. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of those. So Raven learnt the secrets of instant teleportation and has demonstrated to teleport and travel to different realms. She's used her teleportation in combat to also avoid attacks. Raven is able to sense portals. She's able to teleport to realms such as Azeroth, which is an altiversal distance. Raven is able to use her soul self, astral form, which is controlled by her thoughts, though if it's captured or endangered, her real body is in danger. But later on, we discover that her soul self is a separate entity, so Raven will still be alive as long as her soul self remains. An example of this was when Hyperion shattered her soul and Raven was still alive despite the fact that it was shattered. When Raven's body died, her soul possessed another person, destroying their souls and cutting off their life. Even when Raven's body was unconscious, her soul self was still able to operate. Raven can absorb things with her soul self and even absorb people inside. Inside herself is an empty void and it is very cold inside. While inside her dimension, she is in control as she can torture and fear hacks her opponents. Raven can use her soul as a shield to protect herself and push her opponents away. She's even demonstrated with her soul self to turn intangible to escape Hal Jordan's green construct cage. Her soul self has protective barriers to protect it from being corrupted by evil. Time and distance means nothing in her soul self. Raven's soul self can create dark constructs and tendrils to tag her opponents. Her soul self burns a person that was trapping souls. Raven's body and soul exist independently from each other, which explains how she's able to su survive without a soul perfectly fine and vice versa. Raven has also shown to literally use her soul self like a stand from Jojo, punching up goons. Raven's soul self can protect Raven from being possessed. Raven was able to go deep into her soul to pull out her full powers to temporarily weaken and dampen Trigon's will. Raven can be of our people to different dimensions, such as Hell and Azeroth, which the realm can drive you mad and make you feel sick. She can summon the darkness, demons, demigods, and allies to fight for her in combat. She even teleported the Teen Titans to help her one time too. Being an empath, Raven is able to use empathy manipulation. She is able to swallow up a crowd of people's emotions, she can alter people's emotions, such as making Wally fall in love with her. She can sense pain, evil, and danger. Raven is able to heal people by using her powers as an empath to draw the pain to herself and then expel the pain. She is able to calm people down with her powers. Raven can sense multiple people at a time and can sense their power. Raven also has sleep hacks. She was able to put the god Rhea to sleep and calm her bloodlust. Raven can dig deep into your deepest subconscious 
and can reach into your mind and alter it. She can sense your deepest fears and exploit them. Raven's powers work on a spiritual level. Raven has mind hacks the Teen Titans with nightmares. Raven overall can affect and alter people's emotions. She's able to fear hacks and scare her opponents away. She's able to shatter the Titan's soul. Raven can fill her opponents with mindless rage, making them both fight each other. She's able to read people's minds and extract information from people's minds. And she can also create illusions and off-guard her opponents that way. She can use telekinesis and also create barriers for defense. She can create dark tendrils to attack her opponents. Raven can manipulate curses. Her powers are based in magic and she's demonstrated the ability to manipulate the energy of the time stream. Raven can also power null people by casting spells. Raven has also demonstrated to take control over the Batman from the Dark Multiverse's constructs and make them attack him. Raven has spiritual awareness so she can sense a million souls and also she can detect if she's being analyzed. Raven can also regen from injuries. Her eyes can also see invisible people. Raven has precognition, which allows her to see into the future at times and also has a danger sense. Okay folks, that's gonna round up her hexes. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to her resistances. Raven goes through intense mental torture for an extended period of time as the images repeat themselves over and over and over again in her mind. She only passes out and her mind remains unbroken. Raven goes through insanity with a further step into insane as she goes through madness itself going through the dimensions throughout it all she resists it and she's able to conquer it raven can control her emotions in order to resist fear manipulation she was able to resist donna's lasso of truth which is very impressive and she's also resisted bfr raven has resisted the touch of headache who absorbs the minds of those he touches her soul self is foolproof against her brother's hellfire keep in mind hellfire attacks the mind body and soul a person who can still powers through touch gets completely negged really badly after attempting to do this on Raven. Some other noteworthy feats for Raven. Raven was reading the emotions of the Ultima and could tell its intentions. The Ultima is an incredibly complex machine built by the monitors to travel through the bleed and Raven was able to teleport for a night straight. Okay, so that's going to round up Raven. I'm going to go ahead and talk about Majik herself and see what she brings to the table. There's more to Majik's sword than meets the eye. Majik can manifest the sword out of her own essence at any time. Attacks from the soul sword affect you on a physical, spiritual and mental level as the sword decomporates the opponents. The soul sword has holy properties and is designed to vanquish evil and demonic entities and the sword has magical nullifying properties as magic cannot affect the sword and the sword can destroy anything that is of magical origin. Majik's sword also has greater durability negation as it was able to slice through Cap's shield. This is impressive as not even Wolverine's claws can even scratch the shield and the adamantium claws themselves have durability negation as it's been stated they can slice through almost anything. Majik's soul sword is able to neg intangibility as Kitty Pride addresses that her intangibility does not work against Majik's sword, which is very impressive. Majik can also lace her soul sword with magic and blast it at her opponents. Majik and her sword is so powerful. Majik stabbed her soul sword in the ground, which tears the very fabric of Limbo asunder. Similar to the Howl Lords in Marvel, Majik is in her element when she's inside her realm, Limbo. She and her magic is stronger inside the realm her rage alone was affecting limbo for those who aren't aware limbo is a conceptual realm that exists beyond the concepts of space and time and she was able to affect it all i want to go into a little bit more detail with limbo there's a lot of context behind limbo and talk about some of the stuff in the guidebook that corn o'keefe politely sent to me I'm going to go ahead and talk about some more context with Limbo. So events in almost every universe of the multiverse unfold in the same casual sequence and are subject to the physical laws governing the material planes. However, reality is a frighteningly frail structure that can be readily tampered with and altered. The ability to, to manipulate the extortionable flow of time is remarkably commonplace in not just higher and ascended beings but also an ever-growing number of mortals described as chronokinesis 
The term encompasses the power to reorder past events, travel to other times and locations, freeze the passage of time, and slow down or accelerate the progress of objects, localities, or oneself. A particularly cruel tactic involves altering the personal timeline of a person, aging or rejuvenating them against their will. Methods of meddling with time are numerous, but broadly fall into three categories, magical, scientific, and personal intervention. Although time functions differently in higher realms, all physical events occur in a casual continuum. The real world, this region, is surrounded by the timeless limbo dimension, which, which exists as one single, infinite, ever-changing moment. There are in fact two distinct limbo dimensions, one also called Other Place, which is a mystical dungeon plane with varying zones of altered time. It is inhabited by legions of demons and ruled over by potent entities such as Belasco or mutant dark child uh, Ilian Rasputin aka Majik. In true limbo, all possible moments occur simultaneously and whether real world uh, changes are triggered by a spell, time machine or psionic manipulation. All such actions cancel chrono displacement allowing real world change. The most Notable effect is that the time traveler disappears from one point in reality and arrives in another as a result of being part of a multiverse. Whenever reality is disturbed by time alteration, a new divergent universe forms from that point. All time travel is also transdimensional travel. Missions to change the past, however, are pointless and counterproductive for every life saved or disaster averted. At least one other potentially adverse outcome exists from the moment the time traveler arrives at their destination. Nonetheless, constant attempts to reshape key events or steer actions into other courses can have disastrous repercussions further down and across the time stream, and ever expanding domino effect to wreak havoc on the present and alter the shape of every future to counteract this potential for holocaust. Numerous organizations and self-appointed guardians have set themselves up to police the impossible. The most powerful and least intrusive is Immortus, who rules Limbo and acts judiciously, infrequently, and only to benefit his own unknowable agenda. More prosaic and bureaucratic are the officers of the Time Variance Authority. This far future agency is based in a null time zone, monitoring existing and new realities from the Hall of Chronometry and displacing officers to arrest beings straying from their natural times. Their time courts prosecute persistent transgressions and the convicted are condemned to time cells, forever erased from history and locked in recurring time loops. Well-intentioned organizations include Earth 9500 Totem, which stands for Temporal Oversight Team Eliminating Mistakes, and Alien Enigma, He Who Remains, are all ultimately ineffective against super geniuses such as the Temporal uh, Ravenger, Kang the Conqueror, or Implacable Victor Von Doom. The latter's inventions, the Doomlock Chrono Variance Inhibitor, allows the Lavarian Tyrant to traverse the age without creating alternate realities, while also stabilizing Doom's own timeline to prevent him from being altered by shifting events. As powerful as they are, these devices are all but helpless against these experienced in magical travel. The likes of Sorcerer Supreme, Stephen Strange, are too experienced in manipulating the metaphic metaphysical metadata of existence to be stopped by interfering busybodies and wise enough to leave no trace of their passage through time. Limbo, also known as Other Place, transcends all realities and can access all time and space, and there's actually a map of Hell which shows the plane of several levels of Limbo inside of it. So basically, all that I've explained here is just to give you more of a in-depth uh, understanding of how Limbo works and that there's two different distinctive Limbos and Limbo is actually very big, very big, huge, huge realm. Can easily be argued like at least for the lowest of the low, High Alter Plus, 
boundless plus you can even argue argue around being 1s potentially so pretty insane now i'm gonna go ahead and continue move on to some other stuff and talk about Majik and other things that she brings to the table. Majik was also able to best Doctor Strange in her own realm. Now, let's talk a little bit more so about Limbo. So Majik has countermeasures for those who try to teleport inside Limbo. Limbo is filled with Hellfire and Burning Souls. Majik can take a piece out of Limbo and add it to the Mortal Plane. Limbo pre prevents you from creating portals and Limbo also blocks teleportation. Limbo is not bound by nature's law and is a place of transcendental evil where anything is possible. Majit can summon demons from Limbo to aid her in combat. Majit can also summon vines in Limbo which bind you down and drain your life force. It also covers your whole body which chokes and drowns you. The vines also have a mind of their own. Majit can also leave you inside Limbo for her demons to attack you and staying inside Limbo for too long also corrupts you and makes you go insane. Gambit was corrupted by the maddening effects of Limbo. Majik has also shown to be quite sadistic as Majik ties up some of the Avengers and has their minds and souls be feasted upon by demons inside Limbo. Inside Limbo, Majik is ruler. She can do whatever she likes as the realm is a reflection of herself and her will becomes reality inside the realm. More onto Majik's magical powers and miscellaneous stuff. Majik herself can enter into her demonic state even on the mortal plane. When Majik is in this form, she is very powerful. This side of Majik, she keeps suppressed as she doesn't want to reflect that side of her to people. But it's later shown in the New Mutants that it was the Beyonder himself that showed Majik that her demonic powers were a gift and a, res and a responsibility and something not to be shamed of. Over the years, Majik's magic skills are boosted ever since she trained with Doctor Strange. She also demonstrates some incredible showings and feats with her magic. She can vaporize people to dust with her magic. She can blast concussive magic bolts. She can blind or restrain her opponents with mystic chains. She's also tied up Thor in Phoenix fire chains and dunked him in a volcano. She can also coat her magic in Phoenix Fire such as Fire Talon Constructs which physically damage Scarlet Witch, which is very impressive. She can also cast a spell to transmutate you into a slug. Majik's rage was warping and twisting and distorting her teammates which was causing them great pain. Majik can also use hypnosis on people. She can cast a spell to break her body out of paralysis gunk. Majik removes some of Stevie's memories so that she does not remember the dark truths of Limbo and what actually trans transpires for the mutants and of her sorcery. Majik has magical and conventional senses and scanning. She can hear every word her friends say despite them speaking discreetly and she's able to scan for mystic traces to know if somebody is under possession. Majik has a unique ability she likes to use a lot and that is her portal disc. Majik's portal disc moves through time and space and can teleport her back in time or any point in history and through the cosmos. She can BFR objects and people inside Limbo such as BFR and Cap Shield. She's used her portals to summon demons to aid her and she's used her portals tactically by summoning it behind her opponent and have her demons grab her unsuspecting foe to Limbo without them noticing to the last minute. She's used her portal as a pseudo shield to teleport projectile attacks from her enemies and also uses her, t her teleportation ring to negate durability by teleporting a portion of Warlock's arm away. Lastly, she can instinctively activate her portal when she's in danger. Now let's move on to some of the other things that Majik has. So Majik can phase through physical, spiritual and mental and magic attacks as she's phased through her own sword strike. She can view past events from different timelines and also view what transpires on Earth while in Limbo and she can astral project too. Finally, resistances. Majik herself and her armor provides her resistances against many things. An impressive resistance feat for Majik was when Emma Frost was unable to affect Majik's mind. Not even Charles Xavier can read Majik's mind. Charles and Emma 
are one of the most powerful telepaths in Marvel and are Omega level threats. Majik was even able to resist Karma's mind hacks slash fear manipulation. Majik is resistant to possession slash corruption. Majik's soul sword protects and shatters the bonds the shadow had on Majik. If her powers are stripped from her, she can take it back no problem. Empath's empathy manipulation prove useless inside Majik's realm as her will and power reign supreme inside the realm, rendering his hacks completely ineffective as the realm not only increases her stats but also her hacks resistances. Even outside the realm, his empathy manipulation doesn't even work on Majik. Majik also has resistance to transmutation. The Soul Sword purges the transmode virus from Majik's body which turns you and your DNA into a techno-organic construct and it can also corrupt you. Majik also has taken magical attacks too. Majik's armor also protects her from, tra from transmutation as well, which is impressive. Majik's armor instinctively protects Majik. Majik's armor protects her from magic, spiritual and mental attacks, as Sims attacks Majik with her own soul sword, and her armor instinctively grows spikes to block the attack. After exercising Cloak and Dagger's powers, which both attempted to possess and take control of Majik's mind and soul, she uses her sheer, sheer willpower to summon the soul sword to restore her tainted sword and herself to cast away both powers back to Wolfsbane and Sunspot. Now time in Limbo is different compared to Earth as the rules of time on Earth do not apply the same to Limbo as existing inside Limbo. Years would go by as years in Limbo would equate to seconds on Earth and Majik is just fine inside that realm. Okay so that's gonna round up Majik and both Raven, I'm gonna go ahead and give my thoughts on who should take victory more often not in this crossbow situation. So based off stats alone, Raven and of course Majik in terms of AP, Raven should easily be like low creation level, so out of Vessel plus or high out of Vessel or some layers into that tier. And of course you have Majik, she would easily have high out of Vessel plus scaling, boundless scaling, you know, boundless plus even 1s potentially. There are some higher ranges you can take Majik's attack potency, especially the fact that she was able to affect the whole of her own realm in Limbo, her own separate, uh, the, her own specific uh, portion of Limbo, which is very impressive. So, AP, I lean a little bit more so Majik. I think she does have more like higher la higher layers into the into the tier of high out versal, boundless, and 1s. I just don't see what Raven has to meet those criterias. I don't think Raven has enough AP to hang in Majik's pay grade. So I do give AP to uh, Majik. Now speed. Now I'll go more into context with speed when I go over the, like how the uh, win cons and how the actual situation would go down. But I will say that speed isn't necessarily a huge issue, but I do think Raven does have the speed edge slightly. If it's just in the standard, you know, neutral playing field, I just think she does scale a lot higher into speed. But I don't think it's going to be a huge deciding factor. Now, wing cons, Raven of course has all her other magic and other abilities that she can use. She has a lot of uh, mind manipulation, empathy manipulation. She has a lot of uh, barriers, magical barriers, a soul self, soul attacks, etc, etc. Uh, she tends to use that a lot in combat too. Majik, she has a soul sword, she has other magic abilities of her own, uh, she has her portals, she has limbo, she can also bring up limbo, yeah she can literally just summon limbo if she wanted to, and she can also BFR people in there or attacks. Now how the fight would go down, Raven would pretty much start off with shooting out like magic bolts or trying to use magic attacks. The issue here I think with using those attacks, like Majik has a massive counter against like sorcerers. Like her, her soul sword, her armor, it's literally built to fight basically like magic uses it, neutralizes magic, it nullifies it, it completely um, dismantles it. I just think her soul sword and her spiritual magical defenses uh, would just neutralize a lot of Raven's attacks because they're all, a lot of them are more magic based. So I think Raven's going to struggle. Now you could argue that, okay, what if she just BFRs Majik into, you know, inside the soul self. Majik has her own wing cons of her own. She could just create a portal. She could just literally summon Limbo if she wanted to and trap Raven in Limbo. I think if Raven 
goes inside Limbo. I think that's going to be a massive, huge issue for Raven. Like, Magique is going to have the huge, like, playing field edge because Limbo not only increases her, like, her AP, her hacks, her speed, uh, she's going to have full control over the realm. She's basically everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Raven can't get out. Uh, yes, Raven does have teleportation. She's shown to teleport to the God Sphere. However, Limbo's just hu too huge. I think, like, Limbo its place in the Marvel cosmology, especially if you go off the levels of how big the realm is. I just think it's too big and too fundamental for Raven to escape. And plus, Doctor Strange himself, who's one of the most experienced, one of the most powerful sorcerers, like this dude is a veteran. He couldn't get out of Limbo and he ended up losing to Magik. And the realm itself is gonna fight against Raven. However, I think Raven would be able to resist some of the effects of Limbo, but I just think like, you know, she'll get outnumbered, she will get overpowered, she'll start to lose the stat game, and then once that happens, Magique's gonna just get in there, cleave her head off with the Soul Sword. It's gonna neutralize her barriers, even if Raven puts up a magic barrier, the sword's just gonna n nullify it. So, more often than not, I have to give victory to Magique. She has way too many counters, she can neutralize the magic, she can just summon Limbo, even if Raven BFRs Majik, Majik can just summon Limbo inside of her, which would be a huge, massive uh, problem for Raven. So more often than not, I gotta give this to Majik. But yes, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoy, please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe. But yeah, let me, let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. But yeah, it's been real. See you guys in the next one.